大家好，欢迎来到上海，也欢迎啊，谢谢你们招待我们团队来到上海。今天想跟大家说的就是我们啊，去年来到上海，然后又回来的故事。I want to tell the story how we get started,、uh, how we we got here today. It was a dilemma of watching. I got so excited. Because our team based in Silicon Valley, a bunch of infrastructure engineers, looking at this open platform problem, it really got reduced to the question asking us, how can we understand the scale scalability? But keeping the security and the decentralization, it will become the focus of all the story of the last few years. But the journey didn't stop here. It still has a long way to go. I want to tell you one more new dimension to the trilemma today. Become the quadrilemma for us for this decade of questions now to be answering the question of privacy. I will argue. If you think the last few years we all understand now what is blockchain, what is scalability, what is decentralization, we are only beginning to understand what is privacy in terms of product, what the user can understand. What they think of the protection, and I'll argue just the same. It is not an impossibility result that you should have the control of your privacy, not to one single entity that tells you what the protection of data is. What is the decentralization part of the privacy? How can we keep the performance and still have the privacy? How can we think about when someone promises you your data is private, is protected, but you don't trust it? You need to understand security. It's what I propose here. It's the new quadrilemma of blockchain, if not the next decade of research, to really understanding what is the next platform to enable this. But let's not forget why we started. We started because of this question: is you could have built any. Of the DApps or application in many ways, but let's not forget the decentralization. We started this journey because we believe that even 10 years ago, there are tens, if not hundreds, thousands of nodes in the system to talk about decentralization. Ethereum have tens of thousands too. We don't want to sacrifice that. You can sacrifice everything else, but not decentralization, because we could have done it in any other way. If you don't care about decentralization, I want to tell our story why we care so much that we're coming back to this, having harmony, running a thousand nodes to make sure that whatever technology we talk about, whatever product we talk about, whatever results that we have, it still matters how many nodes in the network making mistakes and governments and the consensus decision. There's no consensus without participation. Is our statement? We actually spent so much time to educate new users to deploy it so easily with one click, and we care so much. It's not just about a few of us, the developers or the project team members,、uh, team members to run the node, but our community having the tools, having the understanding how to run this, so that they can make the decision on their own. And we're so excited that not only thousands of people sign up and actually running the node, that they are from all over the world. The idea that 10 years ago one CPU one vote hold dear to us to this day, that we'll make sure that no matter what we do, it's not 21 nodes or 100 nodes, but it will be thousands of people making a decision together all over the world. But there's no consensus. Without incentives or stakes either. So Harmony is very excited to introduce the new scheme called Effective Proof of Stake. The central problem in staking is: Can we do proof of stake without the KYC? Can we handle the cyber attack? Can we not worry about? The centralization again, 
if you see Bitcoin, it started with very decentralized, but people figure it out. It has to be a dynamic system, such that there's a balancing force that it will be anti voting It will be centralization resistance. If you don't talk a lot about the idea of quadratic voting, quadratic sticking in the radical market concept, we care about it just the same. Whether using the square root function to normalize the high sticker, we came up with the idea called capped median. So that the network is big enough, we will have thousands, if not 160, uh, 1,600 nodes here, that we know that there are enough seats for people to make decisions. But who has a stake? And how much stake will convert to the reward, matters of law, to the system? You still need to have delegation. You still need to have compliance. But can we allow the people that the top won't overtake the network? It's what we care about. And for the low sticker, they really don't have a choice, but they can be making just as much of a reward. It's also what the next generation of books they need to figure out. But security is the reason why there are billions and billions of assets, and you can trust the system to have your value and contract that you can trust. The security part of the next generation of platform is really hard if you start with sharding, and that's what we have, to think about the scalability. We're the first production system with the mainnet to figure out state sharding, to figure out cross shard transactions, to figure out secure resharding. But that's not only it. We even implement the first blockchain view change, to know that it's all about the network. That's why we emphasize a lot about the data availability in our network infrastructure, propagate the blocks in a really short amount of time, to think about how can we in the future, as we add a shard, we will still be able to scale. We are the first system to implement the verifiable random function with the DLS multi-signature scheme. We move on to a verifiable delay function from scratch to implement the function so that they enable all these new secure way of resharding. Again, sharding is a principle. New randomized random function is the new primitive that will allow the platform to be very simple. There's no complicated scheme. And now our, and our, our entire idea of a harmony blockchain is really about to bring the best research to production. Very simple primitives. Security, cryptographic primitives. is what we need. But we don't forget why we're on this journey at all. It's not just about technical research or engineering. We build product, build system for all of us to use. When we talk about scaling trust, when we talk about radically fair economy, only humans care about this measure, metrics of success. We are really approaching understanding the human needs. But it has to be at that scale of billions of people. Otherwise, again, a good government, a good, even a company now, can handle Tens of millions, tens of millions, hundred millions, a billion people. Let's think about the next open platform. That's why we started the community. Community is where you start. They said the best dream killer, isolation, is a dream killer. We started this community in Silicon Valley when we have just a few ideas. The idea of TGI, thanks God. It is Friday. Started inside Google, we have a few ideas. This is your ambition. This is the next part of demo to tell each other what you want to be with next. After Google, I came out and started with a few friends, ex Googlers, ex Apple, that really want to think about what is the next generation of product, machine learning and blockchain, that all of us can work together. We do it with so that it is not just an event that people really 
just come together when we have ideas. We come together to work on the next dream. That we can have it, have a way to give each other feedback. They call it the general magic. General magic is what started iPhone, started Android, eBay actually. It's where Steve Jobs really curated the community. We call ourselves stay hungry and stay foolish for a reason. But we also care about the market. It's why me and my whole team came back to China last year to really understand market first. We have to understand the blockchain market. We have to understand the Asia China market. So we're very excited to tell you guys that since last year, we really built all the community, starting with our core team. It is seven of us from Amazon, Google, Apple, all infrastructure engineers looking at this problem. All Stanford, Harvard, all the traditional talent is what we have from the big companies bringing the platform experience. Now that the concept is valid that blockchain is going to change the world, can we bring the talent from the best school, best company to come out and really be the production level quality of scaling it? But we are not just a concept. We really have to think about adoption. Beyond that is actually the loyalty, our users coming back to users. We are very excited to announce that one of the best products in the healthcare space, in the health data fitness space, Limbo, available on Samsung Wallet, will be exclusively built on Harmony. Thinking about day to day, they don't need to know the blockchain, but the incentives. The reason why they got me bored and coming back to this platform, sharing the challenges of exercise and fitness, but building on the blockchain to tell them how they can think about their loyalty. We also very excited, just a few weeks ago, we jointly acquired Quid, some of the best branding and license of the assets that people understand. Again, I can talk about technical all day. My background is also CS, PhD, to go very deep on technical. But 99% of the people of the world, they want to care about what they can play with and touch with. That whether it's the asset that they can openly trade, NFT, whether it's the games that they can play on the blockchain. We want to give them the brands and the, and the asset and the cartoon that they can play with. The great thing is they need a new generation of blockchain just as much. The need for speed, why a car model, car model so for so much. But we don't lose sight on the next generation of game side. We do think the core problem of many of these economy start from the concept of how do we do lottery? How do we do tournament? How do we do matching? It's the core concept of marketplace. Again, if you want to develop the next generation of the economy, think marketplace. If you're thinking about marketplace, how do I get my match? How do I know that I get my fair share? It's a concept of the randomness that now can be approached. And another great primitives for all the next games and plays and generations that we believe is going to be what the next generation of blockchain need to solve and provide their primitives. <laughs> and we're very excited that the games that we build when we just launched a few months ago, have 60,000 users on the launch day. We can, we can actually put the game plays and the decision and choice and bets on the launching day. We've been busy building the product. It doesn't matter where the token economics, the token market goes, we are, build, we are busy building the product. And these have been all the product ideas that we've been playing with. And it's not just product. It's about really getting to the users through branding, through campaigns. My little Pangea campaign getting thousands of notes. And getting the partners that understand consumers, understand the incentive and loyalty of consumers. But they are much more true. When we see the community is all care about expressing their opinions. We know that there are more to just having the CPU for mining. 
they may not have their token, they may not have the stakes, but everyone has their opinions. We call it the social environment. We call it the community voices that each of us have to hear. It's the core part of the governance of any of the project now. Our partner will be what we call the decentralized intelligence agency. Instead of CIA, we call it DIA. Because that's what we need to know. If you're thinking that you are the next, almost like if it's a currency of the government, you are the government that needs to hear. You are the platform developer that needs to hear from the community. Reading all these Telegram messages, be able to search, rank, link, engagement metrics of all of that using machine learning. It's very exciting to understand that there's much more way to engage your community. We don't call it the roadmap of the project. We call it the speed of execution. Speed of execution at the 99 cents is what we learned last year in Cupcake Chat. Understanding where the market is going next is every talk about implementing it. Bringing the best research results to production is what we care a lot about. We are Ethereum compatible, EVM compatible, so we want to be able to port all the toolings and DeFi apps to our platform to really showcase it. So we're very excited to announce another partnership that actually will make the app so easy, not just to build, but to integrate with the traditional experience of the users, credit cards information on how to really use the application. It's what we think is going to be the frictionless way of engaging the developers. And Carbon will be releasing stable coins, integrating a few lines of code for Harmony. But there are much more to it. I start with the story of privacy. I don't have much to say, because it's such a new narrative. But we do know one thing, privacy is not to be private or not, black box or black and white. It's going to be something much more nuanced. The idea of auditable privacy is a very, very new concept. How can I respect your data while there are compliance way of making sure that the bank still have the like a custodial fund, we still pay the tax, and we can all check each other's balance sheet that all still all sums up? It's again mentioned. Sufficiently advanced technology really looks magic to people best not. The proof of solvency and having capacity specific keys so that it's much more than just multi signature. It's why we are so excited to work with some of the best research and best projects like Dora to understand what is the next stage of the base world. Harmony, we are already launched. But to be honest, we are still so underutilized. New Gene has that problem. We have thousands of machines that are used. It's why we are very serious running some of the most expensive, computationally hard, computationally expensive primitives, like zero knowledge curves, on a new network. So that we're proving it out to be possible to be running all these new hard things to validate many of these new concepts. We are all engineers. To be so excited that many of these new knowledge proof primitives start from impossible to run, even though it's theoretically possible, from hours to compute to minutes. And now we are not even happy that it takes a few seconds because of mobile clients, it needs to be instant. It is really the wet dream of engineering. It's like the most more small. The most small told us that just look to the future, it is possible to do this because we know that it will keep on getting faster. That's why we're so excited. Ethereum has the idea of link P2P and we want to take it to the next level. It's not just peer-to-peer, -peer, but end-to-end. -end. Many of these concepts of the erasure coding that TV broadcast network already we able to build so that it's very reliable, building it out for the mass, it's why we think that many of the data availability problem is still so unsolved that we still have a decade to build for a base world. It's why we are still so committed for this journey of many years to, to come. 
very excited to share many of the story of why we came to China last year and where we end up today. Can't wait to come back again. Uh, we definitely look forward to coming back to China for more. Thank you. Thank you.